Welcome to another session of Stock Market Update. Today is August 26, 2017. It's uh, Saturday uh, morning here. Well, it's Saturday afternoon, early afternoon. It's 12.30 here on the West Coast. It's nice, uh, pleasant San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the uh, the market here and then we uh, take a look at the uh, some of these uh, the momentum stock uh, first uh, looking at the S&P 500 and the VIX and also the cumulative uh, New York Stock Exchange advanced decline as you can see that uh, we have a little bit of a divergence between the uh, advanced decline and the S&P 500 although the uh, VIX uh, pulled back but it did not uh, pull back to uh, its prior low down below the 10 area in the uh, in the sub nine. Uh, it is sitting uh, at the uh, you know above the 11. Uh, what I see is there still could be a possibility for this thing to come back up and spike it one more time uh, and uh, see the uh, market pull back just a little bit more before we uh, get a nice bounce. And the uh, advanced decline, uh, this divergence seems to indicate, you know, in the past, uh, there's a high probability that we will get a, a little bit of a bounce when we see this uh, positive divergence uh, between the advanced decline and the uh, S&P 500. And we'll take a look at the S&P 500 uh, a little closer uh, after this. So. Um, so essentially, we are looking at maybe uh, uh, a near-term bounce you know, after, uh, after this uh, little pullback here. And maybe the, uh, the catalyst will be the, uh, the death ceiling that they, uh, they raised at or something happened that uh, get the market all euphoric again you know excited on the long side again so let's go and uh, take a look at the S&P 500 okay so uh, here we got the uh, S&P 500 looking at the weekly we see uh, it ended the week on a positive note with a uh, with a positive a uh, little bit of a gain uh, uh, this week uh, it did uh, take out the previous uh, week low okay and it is still one framing down although on the uh, bigger picture, the trend is still uh, still up. And if we uh, take a look at the uh, daily here, okay, the daily right now we essentially you know got the scalp fill, but uh, you know here's the range that I'm looking at. Uh, it's uh, we got this Tuesday engulfing uh, candle here. It's kind of coiling inside of this uh, candle. Although Friday is not a uh, uh, good day, you can see that it opened up and ran it up early and then it uh, pulled back and faded throughout the day. So you can see, uh, you know, just kind of chop around throughout the day and then uh, faded in the last uh, uh, half an hour or so. And that's probably uh, some got to do with the OPEX also. So there's always that funny uh, games that being played on Friday. But what we're going to watch is the uh, you know this range here. So if it uh, move above, then we want to see would it be able to come up and uh, take out this uh, this high. And then if it uh, get below the uh, Tuesday low, then we're essentially are looking for this little gap to get filled and possibly get down to uh, this area here. Uh, it might even uh, depending on uh, what uh, uh, some uh, some some of the stuff that might be uh, possibly you know spook the. Uh, the market, we, we could see it come down and um, to this 2400 level, you know, and spike it down here. And that might get a little bit of a wash out, then we get a nice bounce from there. Remember I was uh, talking about that, uh, you know, in the last couple of videos. I want to see how we're going to bounce when we get down here before we even start looking at this uh, level here, the uh, 2352 area. Right? Because what I'm looking at is the possibility, let's say for example, it come down we come down here and then we get a bounce then we come back up you know and maybe uh so let me uh let, let me do this uh let's screw this over okay so essentially what i'm looking at is the possibility of this coming down here right to the uh, 2400 area and then we get a bounce up 
right, then we get a nice bounce. And what the setup is essentially this potential head and shoulder top. Okay, all right, and and maybe uh, you know that will uh, give a little bit of a bigger flush in the next time around. But we'll see. All right, and that, that that's one of the uh, scenario that I'm kind of watching. That's why I want us wait until the S and P 500 get down to this 2400 and see what kind of price action we're gonna get from it and then we'll get the uh, map out potential scenario is it going to come down to this 2350 uh, ish area or it's going to bounce up and try to reclaim the 2450 uh, ish area okay so that's basically on what i'm looking at but again if we do get a little bit of a short-term bounce and uh, I know a lot of people are thinking about looking at this trend line here. And if we break above the trend line, we still need to see would it be able to take out this high because we need to get a, a higher high, right, to reverse that trend, right? Because right now we're essentially on a uh, lower high, lower low, right? So we need to uh, get that, okay? So, and if we uh, take a look at the, uh, the open interest for the uh, SPX, you know, the S&P 500 uh, on a Wednesday, the Wednesday uh, uh, expiry, we are seeing a 2450 pin, potential 2450 pin. And notice there's a 2425, maybe high level of uh, open interest on the put side. So the possibility is that, you know, the market could could come down to this 2425 and this basically act as a support because when you get to uh, close to these level and uh, some of these people that uh, bought the put and it's in the money, then uh, they basically uh, want to cash out. Then the market maker basically have to go and uh, uh, come back into the market to uh, buy back the uh, the stock that they short to maintain that uh, uh, delta uh, neutral uh, stand. And that will um, bring in some, uh, some buying pressure and push us back up. Then we could see that it could move back toward the uh, 2450 or maybe a shift the open interest down to 2445 and and be uh, you know pin that 2445 on Wednesday okay that's uh, that's one of the possibility that's why I'm looking at the possibility of this thing come down a little bit maybe in the early part of the week and then work itself back up. Now then also on Friday, if we take a look at the Friday pin, the Friday pin is also a 2450, right? The potential pin is at 2450. And on the Friday, we got a 2425 uh, peak at the, on the put open interest. So again, you know, we could see this thing move down. Maybe it, it won't move down to the 2400, uh, well, it's a 2425. Sorry, I got the 2425, 2400 is here. So it could move down to that 2425, right? And then people start uh, uh, covering the uh, or closing out the put, okay? Then uh, then kind of pushes it back up to the uh, 2450. Because also, if we take a look at the spy, right? The spy on the uh, Wednesday pin. See, the spy is uh, you know 245. Right, that's uh, equivalent to a 24.50, and uh, but the spy have a uh, peak uh, somewhere around the uh, 2400. I mean uh, the the 240. Let me see, is that the 240 peak? So we got a 240 here. That's basically as 200, you know, 2400 on the SPX. Okay, so uh, and there's the. Uh, 20, you know, 240, 250, and that will be the uh, 24, 50, uh, 2425. So we can see some activity maybe shift down here and then push this back up and try to pin that either at the, uh, you know, 24450, you know, somewhere around here, 24450, or the, uh, you know, the 245 here on Wednesday. Okay, and then on the weekly on Friday again, we're basically looking at a 245. So, you know, it seems like 245 is a magic number, 2450 uh, for next week on the uh, S&P 500, with the potential downside somewhere around the uh, you know uh, or, or a spook somewhere around at the uh, 2425 area. You know, right here we got a 24, you know, 242 here on a Friday. Uh, you know, uh, uh, open interest, and then we got the uh, 
two uh, two forty here. So that represent a uh, twenty four hundred. So again, let's go, let's go take a look at the spy chart and see what that looks like. Uh, let me put the spy back on here, and uh, yeah, again on the weekly got a uh, up week. Uh, also, basically uh, one frame, uh, one time framing down, but still holding that uh, longer trend. Okay, on the uptrend, but again we're essentially uh, you know looking at this uh, this candle here. Uh, right, so so basically what we're looking at is uh, close above here. Then we want to see can it get up uh, and take out this uh, pivot high here. If it close below, then we're looking at this gap fill and possibly come down and test this low, and then we're going to keep an eye on this. Uh, you know, uh, 239.96 at 240 area. If we come down that far and see how this thing bounces, right? Again, because we basically is looking for that possibility to come up and then do this, right? So we get a head and shoulder top with a baseline down here at this 240, and then going to do the major move down. Okay, if it uh, break that head and shoulder pattern. All right, so that's basically is the spy. And now let's go and take a look at the NASDAQ 100. And on the weekly, the NASDAQ 100 also closed up for the week and also made a uh, new low for the week also. All right, so it's uh, basically a one time framing down, continue to, uh, to uh, on, on this little bit shorter term. But uh, on the long term or a little bit longer term, the trend is still, uh, still up. So the uptrend still remain intact for now and then on the uh, daily you can see that the daily uh, similar to the S&P 500 although uh, during the midweek you know, on Thursday it did uh, break below this low right here on Thursday but it wasn't able to close below that because it came back in so essentially you know we're looking at this range on the Tuesday uh, candle the range if it uh, close above then we're basically looking at this uh, you know this pivot high here okay so we have to take out this uh, essentially somewhere around this uh, 59.50 if it close below we got a little gap that get filled and then also again we're basically looking at the uh, 54 uh, I mean 57.49.65 here okay and if we uh, take a look at the Q okay and the ETF right you know so on the uh, weekly basis here Again, we're looking at this, uh, you know, this thing here. All right, this candle, the range, go above. Then we're basically looking at this 144.96 or 145, essentially. If we go below, you know, take a look at the fill this gap and possibly come down at this uh, 140. All right. Okay. So that's basically what we're looking at. And then again, if we come down to this 135.80. That's why, again, I, I said I want to see how we're going to bounce when we get down here before I even look at any other level. So it's the same thing like the uh, S&P 500. If it come down and break this 140 and then come down here, I want to see what it be able to get a bounce back up, you know, and then come back down here. Again, we're basically looking for the formation of a head and shoulder top, okay? And that's the reason why I'm looking at the 135.80. Uh, level to see how the price action going to behave when it get down there. Okay. So uh, and then if we uh, go and take a look at the uh, open interest for the Q. Okay, let me switch that to uh, get the Q on there. The Q is 142. Right, we got a 142 potential pin here. Right, and uh, you know 142. So essentially, it's pretty pretty much. Uh, uh, near where it closed on Friday, right? But what we could see is the possibility of moving this thing down to this 140. Remember that 140 that well that that support here. If we go back to that chart here on the uh, uh, the QQQ. See this 140 level here, right? If it come down, if it come down, we're basically looking at this 140, right? And here's the uh, you know, 142 right, for the pin somewhere around here because uh, Friday closed at 141.97. Okay, so uh, so we can see that uh, we could get a shift down, you know, early in the week to that 140, right, and then uh, and then get some support there and then push us back up. 
then uh, on Friday as uh, uh, Opmax approached, it, uh, you know, work its way back up and pin at that 142. Right, so uh, that's basically what we're looking at on the Q or the Nasdaq 100, and then on the Russell 2000, uh, looking at the Russell 2000 on the weekly, right, it's uh, got a little bit of an inside week type of candle here. It did close uh, the week uh, with a with a gain, okay. But uh, so right now we we basically see would be uh, you know breaking the uh, the previous week low, not this week's low. And uh, to continue the one time framing down, or would it be able to take out this high here and start uh, doing this uh, one time framing up? And uh, and we uh, possibly reverse that trend. Because if we uh, take a look at on the uh, daily chart here, uh, remember that channel that we're still looking at, it broke that channel, came down, and found some support here at this uh, one, you know, 1351 area and got a little bit of a bounce and coming back up to the uh, to this uh, channel uh, lower trend line uh, it's encountered some sort of resistance we want to see would it be able to get back above it and get in get back into the channel and the next level of resistance that we want to watch is somewhere around this uh, you know 1396.90 uh, or basically 1397 okay so that's what we're basically watching uh, I don't have any uh, open interest on the IWM. I'm um, not watching that. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, in the future I uh, put that together, put that chart together, and then we get the, take a look at the IWM. I'm not sure how many people is trading on IWM. Uh, I know I'm not. So, uh, but uh, I I I will put one on in the future uh, if uh, you guys are interested, and just let me know. And maybe I post it up, uh, post one up uh, during the during the week, on uh, on Twitter. Uh, so so essentially, uh, that's basically what we're looking at on the uh, IWM. So now let's go and take a look at the stock here. We're going to take a look at Apple, and uh, look at Apple on the weekly. Uh, basically, got an up week. Okay, uh, but still. Uh, have, haven't we claimed the all-time high yet? And that still could set up some sort of a pullback type of a pattern. But the uh, the longer trend is still up, okay. And we uh, take a look at the uh, the daily. We uh, zoom that out here. On the daily here, right? It, uh, it it came down, but it did not come down to retest this 154.62 area. Uh, and got a bounce, and we got the uh, inside candle on Friday, engulfing by a little bit of a bearish candle. So we'll see would it be able to uh, come back up and uh, and take out the uh, the all time high. If it can't take out the all time high, then essentially I'm watching for this 154.63 to be taken out and come down and fill this gap down with the 150.22. Uh, okay, and uh, and if we uh, want to take a look at the uh, Open interest on Apple. Let me go and take a look at the put on open interest on Apple. Uh, we see a 157.50 pin potential uh, with a high interest open interest at this 162.50. I believe. All right. Let's see. Make sure that I get that number right. Okay. So it is 162.50. Okay. So that's a high uh, high interest uh, peak on the call side. Alright, the 157.50 is the projected pin right now, and that 157.50 is essentially is coming back to that level. That's that little gap there on uh, on Monday. If we uh, go back and uh, take a look at the Apple chart here, right, that's uh, somewhere around here because that's one uh, 157.89. So essentially, it could come back down, and if the market flushes itself down to uh, I don't know let's say the S&P go down to a 24-25 area then we can see Apple come down into this area here right it could come down into this area and then work itself back up and then maybe uh, pin pin itself here at that 157.50 so overall still could be a down week for Apple right okay so that's basically what we're looking at 
on Apple uh, for the pen and if we uh, take a look at the uh, look at Facebook okay so look at Facebook let's go back and take a look at the weekly on Facebook Facebook been on a one-time framing down ever since I believe this is the end the uh, uh, earning uh, week here okay so we take a look at the daily although the trend is still up I right? see I think uh, this is the earning gap and they've been kind of fading down and try to and, and, and kind of fill that gap and you know haven't come down to this 156.20 uh, it seems to be uh, you know uh, biting its time here okay all right so uh, you know it's essentially waiting for this thing to uh, to come down and maybe velocity come and fill in this gap at 156.20 Okay, and if we uh, go and take a look at the uh, the open interest on uh, Facebook, it appears that the projected pin right now could be 165. Okay, so and there's a 170 peak on the call side, but also could uh, work itself down to this 160 area, right? Before um, uh, uh, you know, work itself back up to this 165 pin. Okay, so if we go back and take a look at the chart here, you know, possibly on this 160 or even this 162.50, you know, moving down in this area here. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at now this 155. That could be pretty dramatic. You know, the market flush is a possibility that it could come down and tag this 155. Remember here, going back to the chart here. Remember this uh, this pivot high here, this gap here, right? You know, this this little gap here. Okay, here is uh, 156.20. So, uh, and this way right here is uh, 155.42, I believe. Okay, so so that's that possibility. All right, let me see what the high is on this guy here. Yeah, 155.42. So, you know, if we get a flush in the market here early in the week, or for some whatever uh, catalyst, we could see this thing coming down. Remember, you know, this Friday, this uh, next Friday, is also we have the uh, uh, the uh, the payroll uh, number, okay, the job report, All right? So, so uh, you know, be be aware of that. So we could see this thing uh, possibility of coming down here at this 155, and then work itself back up. I mean, that's you know, that's always a possibility. So, but for now. Uh, based on the open interest, uh, seem like the most likely uh, pin is somewhere around this 165, with the potential of coming up to that 170 and then back off. So this basically acts as a resistance and maybe velocity down here somewhere. You know, this 157.50, uh, 160 could be a little bit of a support area. Okay, so we just gotta kind of keep an eye on that, All right? You know, because this right here, this 155, yeah, this. You know this area could be you know support area here based on this open interest we we could see that possibility there okay and then let's take a look at uh, Netflix all right Netflix uh, looking at the uh, weekly you know look at this weekly this Netflix candle this big uh, bullish candle this is the earning right and then ever since that week just one time framing down for the last five weeks and it's coming back down to I'm waiting for that that candle you know that gap to get filled all right because I'm looking at this gap here uh, this gap here or this this gap here it came close but it did not come down to this level to completely fill this gap yet and it got nice uh, you know a little bounce here and uh, right now it seems like it's uh, coming back down and it could be uh, coming back down to uh, fill this gap and then uh, depending how we hold this gap uh, you know there is a low gap down here at this 155 area okay and there's the you know the support level that I'm looking at is this uh, 144.25 and if we uh, take a look at the uh, uh, Netflix uh, uh, open interest okay, and we can see the open interest right now is pointing at 170 so it's basically is pointing a little bit of an upward move here and possibly come up and uh, take out this uh, let's go back to the chart here you know take pointing at 170 so that possibly could uh, come up and maybe tag this uh, this pivot high here 
Okay. But again, if we uh, go and take a look at the potential downside, let's say the market decided to sell off early, uh, in, uh, uh, you know, in, in the early part of the week, then we see this 162.50 here. Right, this 162.50 that could uh, that could potentially act as a uh, a support area. Okay, so this uh, 162.50 and that's essentially come down and fill that gap here, the gap that I've been waiting for. Uh, right, because right here is uh, 163.55. Uh, so this uh, one. 162.50 would be somewhere down here, so essentially it could come down here and then come back up, right? And and then pin over here on uh, on Friday, uh, with a fav maybe with a favorable jump number and that kind of stuff. The market rally up and everybody, you know, recover and everybody, you know, going to the weekend happy. And I believe the following week is uh, Memorial Day. I believe uh, that th there's a holiday there. I think right. So let me check. I think there's a holiday there. All right. So anyway, okay. So uh, that space is uh, Netflix, and next is uh, Amazon. Let's take a look at Amazon here. You can see Amazon's been, uh, uh, you know, still hovering at that support level somewhere around that 951 area. You can see that Amazon. This is the earning spike, and ever since this spike, this could be a topping candle here for Amazon for a while and been just kind of one time framing down so um, i'm looking at this uh you know this area here this 920 ish so uh so here we go this 927 area right so basically uh, looking for amazon to come down to this level and then uh, see how it bounces. you know again you know i'm basically looking at this level to form a potential you know we could get a bounce here so you come down here and then come back up right to do this so basically forming some sort of a you know head and shoulder type of a pattern now it's nothing magical about the head and shoulder pattern it's just that it, it happened that we also have a you know here is a higher high right so obviously you got this trend here and basically we're looking for a lower high and it just happened that you know this lower high you know if we get the you know this right here okay right and then we got a higher high in the side so we're just kind of forming that head and shoulder pattern okay we could end up you know basically coming down you know on a channel right that sort of thing but it's just that here this big picture here sort of look like a head and shoulder pattern right okay so you know things that's kind of join us you know play yourself out sometimes so it's all depends so I'm watching this uh, 927 area to see what it be able to uh, get uh, taken out because the open interest here uh, on the Amazon if we could take a look at Amazon uh, the pin is 950 okay and uh, uh, Friday close is 945.26 uh, we have a, a 930 here okay so we got a 930 here uh, 930 here right okay so we could get that uh, 927 right so we can come down uh, below that 930 and then we uh, find some support and then move it back up okay so that's basically the uh, Amazon okay let's take a look at Tesla here Tesla basically looking for this thing to either come up above here you know, above this uh, 371.35 or come down fill this gap and move down to uh, 303 and 13. If we take a look at the weekly chart here you can see weekly chart is potentially could be setting up a uh, double top here right? if it come down and break this level here all right then essentially that is more like a double top with a uh, lower high okay so uh, that's basically what I'm looking at and if we take a look at the pin on the open interest, the pin is 350, with the potential of going down to 345 here, and we got a strong high open interest on the put at 335. So that would put this thing down to that area near the uh, 327, or you know, get into that gap fill here. Okay, so if we uh, go back and uh, take a look at the chart here uh, on Tesla. So Tesla here, we're basically looking at this 331 here, this uh, this pivot low, and here's the uh, 
the gap fill at 327. So we could see this, uh, you know, the possibility if uh, uh, Tesla sells off, then uh, we could see uh, it come down to this uh, 332, essentially get support, uh, testing that support on open interest at 335. Okay, so uh, then uh, let's take a look at the Twitter. Twitter's been kind of interesting. Another rumor been floating around that uh, uh, Disney might uh, go and uh, buy Twitter. I mean, we heard this uh, story before, right? Anyway, so let's take a look at uh, Twitter, and uh, we can see on the weekly, you know, essentially uh, it's trying to hold above this. Uh, let me uh, get this thing here. So you got this long-term trend line coming down. Um, broke out of this trend line but now it came back down and tried to test it down here and be lower you know below the uh, the breakout point but there is this uh, all-time low down here somewhere around the 17 I mean 1373 okay so I'll uh, take a look at the uh, the daily here some of these level uh, looking at this 1760 you know if you could get back above the 17 1760 this is basically the uh, the earning gap here uh, then it might be able to uh, try to work itself back up and fill that gap because right now it kind of broke above this 1648 and kind of pulled back and uh, maybe uh, kind of uh, test that uh, for support right now and if we uh, go and take a look at Twitter's uh, open interest for potential pin for next week I got two level here the 16 level been hanging around for quite a long while and uh, last week or uh, yesterday Friday um, it booked that 16 pin because it uh, it closed at 1665 so essentially it was pinning somewhere around 1650 we have a shift up here on open interest at 1750 right on the call here and then we got a 16 on the put so what we could see is maybe we will see that push to that 1750 essentially working up to that pivot high on the earning gap, right? That earning gap is sitting at 1760. Right? Let's go back to the chart and take a look at that. And essentially, uh, this right here, 1760, and we got a pin at 1750. So maybe it could uh, come up here and uh, try to uh, pin it at uh, 1750 uh, this coming week. But then we also got that 16 level, so essentially coming back down at this 16 level here that's also another 16 level on the support so maybe you know if we work yourself down here make it find support and then push it back up to 1750 that's one possibility okay and i talked about go uh last week and uh, the week earlier uh, uh, i will do a uh, separate video and uh, take a look at some of the gold mining stock and also the uh the ETF, the GDX and GDXJ, uh, those things. But uh, right now, it's basically looking at gold. I think gold is uh, setting up for a uh, little bit of a breakout move here. Uh, I think uh, you know, based on some of the macro and uh, uh, picture here, you know, and then also the uh, potential uh, fear that come into the market of uh, maybe a pullback or a correction and uh, a lot of uncertainty uh, floating around the world so uh, that kind of throw up the fear because gold is only good for two things right one is inflation hedge and the other thing is the safe haven okay so uh, we know there's not much inflation based on the uh, government's uh, measurement right and uh, and and then there's this safe haven play right now basically it's more of a safe haven play okay so so we're probably seeing gold is gonna gonna break out of this uh, long term, uh, you know, uh, uh, trend here, right? We we talk about this trend line here, this long term uh, multi year trend line, right? And uh, we essentially recently got this break uh, above this. So right now we're looking for the possibility of breaking above this uh, pivot high here. Then maybe uh, we'll come up and uh, start taking out of uh, you know different uh, resistance level as it work up. Uh, uh, back to uh, maybe this major level here uh, somewhere around the uh, 147 so that's basically uh, maybe we're talking about you know 1470 1475 on go right? maybe somewhere around even 15,000 I mean 1500 okay so uh, so those are the some possibility uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that but certainly I think uh, 
it's a good time to uh, keep a close eye on these uh, gold and gold miner uh, stock here and maybe uh, there, there are some plays here that uh, uh, in the near term uh, might be worthwhile of, uh, of uh, looking okay so that's basically it for this week uh, market update and hopefully you uh, find this uh, useful and informative please don't forget to uh, click on the like and subscribe to this uh, video channel if you're not a subscriber yet and uh, enjoy your weekend